I wanted to be a professional tennis player. Figured at age 12 that wasn't gonna happen. Then I wanted to be an architect. Sorry, architects. Age 13, decided that wasn't for me. Um, and I was a good student, but I was a little bit lazy. I liked history and I liked geography, but I thought to myself, well, if I study geography and I'm done with Africa, none of that transfers to Asia. I'm gonna to have to start again. And so I had this kind of instinctive feeling that there must be somewhere in the world of scholarship where the further you went, the less you had to know because you could work things out sort of from first principles. And that's exactly what theoretical physics is. The further you go, the less you have to know because you can work it all out from a smaller set of principles. And so at age 13 or 14, I found myself reading a biography of Einstein and thinking, I like this, that's what I want to be. I've never wavered for a minute. That's what I love, that's who I am, and that's what I dream about. There are lots of different flavors of theoretical physicists. Uh, the flavor I am part of is called condensed matter physics. We look at the world and its building blocks, which for us are typically things like atoms and molecules. It's still not obvious what happens when you bring billions of them together. Why is it that on a cold day when you bring water molecules together, you get ice, but on a warmer day, you get water. We're interested in my field in the enormous rich array of possibilities that can happen. What is it that governs that behavior that leads to, on the one hand, liquid crystals or magnets or superconductors, many other exquisite exotic organizations of matter? Why is it that a piece of ice is rigid, but water isn't? What does that even mean? So that's my field, condensed matter physics how the properties of matter emerge when you bring billions of agents together and let them interact with one another. I've never had the chance to give students a send-off like this. One, two. I play the drums. Calling me a drummer is a little bit yes. of a stretch. I don't have a very good musical ear, but I owned a drum kit, and in the uh, mid-70s and, uh, and early 80s, uh, this was the sort of punk and then new wave era in uh, London um, and uh, I had a blast being a drummer in all sorts of poor and not quite so poor bands but none of them was terribly good but I had a great time. I really love cycling. It's a way to explore a new setting at a pace where you actually actually absorb things. So when you drive around, it doesn't mean anything, it just goes by too fast. And cycling gives me a chance to just kind of glance around. And it may be worth knowing that I have the world's worst sense of direction and nobody else is even close. And so if you find me lost somewhere in the Stony Brook area, just sort of point me in the right direction. 